Welcome to the E2A Flippers podcast. I'm your host, Steve Rakin, and this show is dedicated to helping you make more money by flipping physical products from eBay to Amazon.com. If that's what you're here to learn, then you're in the right place. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. What is going on, everybody? Steve Rakin here. Episode number three of the E2A Flippers podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the top eight softwares that every eBay to Amazon flipper should be using. Now, not every single one of these softwares is needed in the very beginning. So I am going to mention the ones that I think the beginner should use. I'll mention the ones that maybe you can start using as an intermediate. And then when you start to really scale to maybe 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 K, you know, I've scaled up to 80 K per month. Right now, my sales are down a little bit. They're around 35 K per month. I was close to 80 K and then I had that car hit my house. So I didn't ship anything out for about two months. So my sales tanked. Why? Because if you don't feed the beast, if you stop listing, if you stop shipping the sales in your account, start to tank, but I'm on my way back up. So, you know, it's not what happens. It defines you. It's how you react and where you're planning on going. So I'm planning on getting back up again, baby. So let's talk about these top eight softwares. Every E2A flipper needs, and let's just jump right into things. Okay. So number one, Keepa. Okay, Keepa is a Chrome extension for anyone who's thrifting, maybe going to garage sales and stuff. Keepa does have an app as well. It's not the greatest. You can use it out in the field, but when you're flipping eBay to Amazon, I highly recommend having Keepa because Keepa is going to allow you to know the price history, the buy box statistics. Maybe you're trying to flip an item from eBay to Amazon that has variations and maybe there's like five or six different models or different colors. Well, how do you know which one you want to flip? How do you know which one's popular? Maybe which one's a slow seller? How do you know which one is, you know, in demand? Demand. Well, that's where Keepa will come into play. It'll let you know which ones are the most popular, which ones sell the best. So price history, buy box statistics, variations. When I'm going to price my items, right? So after I pick up my items and I'm checking them in, I'm going to price them and set my minimum prices, my maximum prices. I'm looking at Keepa to determine, you know, where the buy box price has been, where the merchants have been. And, you know, it just really helps you to analyze a deal if it's good or bad and price it. There is a free version of Keepa, but the thing about the free version is it's not going to share like a lot of the buy box statistics and variations and some of the, the different features. There's some different Keepa features, product finder, which might Keep a product finder might be free. I'm not sure, but there's a bunch of different features that I highly recommend paying the $20 a month fee for. I think it's necessary. You know, there's probably 5% of the people who are like, I don't need Keepa. And when I actually started thrifting, I didn't use it. So I don't say, I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent necessary, but honestly, like if you're scaling past anywhere, you know, a couple thousand dollars a month, it's going to be well worth the 82 cents <laughs> per day uh, to use Keepa. So Keepa is number one, highly recommend it. That'll pop up on your Amazon product page. So say, for example, you're going to pick an item up, you'll be able to have that chart pop up, see the price history, the variations, all that good stuff. So Keepa is a no brainer. Number two is Seller Amp. And I do want to let everybody know if you want any discount codes or links to these resources and you're like, how do I get them? Check the show notes. I have some different coupon codes and just links. Yeah, use them or not, but I always appreciate the support. But Selleramp, Selleramp's great. This is another tool that's about $20 per month. Now there's other apps out there such as RevSeller. There's another one as well that I know that people use, but essentially what Selleramp does is it's a Chrome extension. I, I do believe there's a web base as well, but I just use the Chrome extension and essentially it overlays on top of a product page similar to Keepa. But the reason this is really good is because you can actually put in your buy cost, your selling price, and it'll tell you what your profit margins are. It'll tell you your ROI, how much profit you're gonna make. You could easily see your competitors, how many are MF, how many are FBA. It's really nice. There's also one feature on there that is called eBay. So it's a little eBay button and when you click it, it's like a reverse search. So it reverse searches the UPC. So say you're looking at like a specific Lego item and maybe you're like, oh, I want to see if it's any cheaper on eBay. You know, maybe you're sourcing Flipmine. You could hit that eBay button. It reverse searches the UPC and you could find deals that way. There's also an order button. So it just says order and say you're looking at like a Lego 505 race car, right? I just make, made that up. You could hit orders and it'll go into your Amazon seller central and it'll let you know if you've ever sold it before, which is a great resource. So seller amps about 20 bucks a month. I would say keep on seller amp are very important. Number three, flip mine. Now, actually in episode number four, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips for sourcing more profitable deals with Flipmine. And essentially what Flipmine is, is it's a sourcing software and 
it pretty much sources deals on eBay that you can flip on Amazon FBA. So this is, this is what we do. We buy items on eBay, we flip it on Amazon FBA. And what you can do is you can put in specific criteria and rules and different types of categories and items you want to pick up. Maybe you want to buy a DVD that's going to make at least $6 profit, 30% ROI with a rank under 80,000. You could put all that criteria into Flipmine and then it goes and it searches eBay and it compares against Amazon and essentially finds you your deals. Okay. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to this podcast. And if, Hey, if you have a question you want to ask me, check the show notes down below. I have a way that you can ask questions. And I could answer them and feature you on the, on the podcast, but Flipmine, fantastic. If you are going to use the free trial, definitely go check out the show notes for my discount code. I have a code that will save you 20% off the first three months. Flipmine's great. Big shout out to David. He actually created that software. Definitely a fantastic software. Number four. Now, this isn't a tool that you need if you're brand new, but once you start scaling up to, I would say buying, you know, two, three, four items from eBay per day. And remember that might not sound like a lot, but a lot of the items we're picking up on eBay might be 20, 30, 40, 50, $60. So it gets expensive quick. A tool that I just created, it's called the E2A master sheet. Now you can check this out. I have a free 30 day trial. You can check out if you go to rakeandprofit.com slash E2A master sheet. But essentially this is a tool that I've created that helps you to be able to list your items way faster, keep all your items very organized. Um, it helps you to know what items have been shipped to you, what items weren't shipped back to you. It helps you to uh, reconcile your inventory, deal with returns returns. It automatically integrates with eBay. So every time you buy an item on eBay, it integrates with your master sheet, pulls all the data over there. It makes it really fast and easy to be able to list more, find more deals. So once you start buying more than three to four items per day, or at least I would say two, two to three items a day, definitely check out the E2A master sheet. Now, number five, go to Lister. So if you're new to selling on Amazon, be very careful listing only with Amazon Seller Central because Amazon Seller Central is slow, it's clunky. And I say this all the time, you'll be listing on Amazon, which, you know, it's free. I mean, well, it's not free. It's $39.99 a month, but you need it for the pro account. But when you list on Amazon Seller Central, like you might be listing a book and it's asking you, you know, are batteries required? They ask this, they ask that. It's just, it's very clunky and slow. It's not meant for you to list fast. And when you're selling on Amazon, the name of the game is speed. Okay. So go to Lister is a software that I use and it helps me to be able to list items a lot faster. It helps you to bypass a lot of the questions that Amazon will ask. And it also has a feature called smart pricing, which essentially helps you to price a lot quicker and you can scan a bunch of items a lot faster. Definitely check out GoToLister. There's a bunch of other ones out there as well. There's Inventory Lab, there's Acceler List, there's Scan Lister. There's a, there's a whole wide variety of listing softwares, but you know, I like GoToLister because it's easy and just simple to use. Now, number six, okay. I can't reveal too much about this right now. It's not available, but I actually created my own replan software. So what's a replan? You have a replan as an item that maybe you've sold before. Maybe Maybe you flipped it on Amazon eight months ago or three months ago, or maybe you bought a specific book off of eBay and you flipped it on Amazon and you sold it and now you don't have any more in your inventory. Well, that's a replan. You want to replenish your inventory. So how do most people do that? They have a Google sheet and you know, maybe they have the title, the eBay buy link. Maybe they have like their target price, so on and so forth. And they have to manually go one by one line by line in their Google sheet to find that item, search eBay. And while that's very effective, I did it for years. It's very manual and it's time consuming. So what I've actually developed, and this is how my team is sourcing pretty much, I would say 80% of our inventory now is with this replan software. So we're hoping it will be out soon. We'll definitely uh, keep everybody in the loop, not to tease you guys, but I just want to be transparent. I'm sourcing a lot of my inventory from this replan software. Now, again, since you can't use it, use a Google sheet. Now put your whole replans list on it, pull the eBay URL, filter it to newly listed lowest price first, get that URL, put it in your sheet. And that's your little fast track click off to eBay to find that deal at your target price. Okay. So definitely get yourself a replens list going. Number seven, this isn't necessary in the beginning. I would say once you get to maybe, I don't know, 200 items, hundred to 200 items in your Amazon inventory, maybe you're selling $5,000 to $10,000 a month. I'd recommend getting a repricer. Now I use be cool. There's a bunch of other ones out there. There's aura, 
I think I said scan lister before. I don't know. Scan lister or a lister or a repressor? I think that's a lister. I'm not sure, but you know, I stick to go to lister for listing and be cool for repricing. I like be cool because it has an AI repricing feature. Now it ain't cheap. It starts at about a hundred dollars per month. But what I like is I could set my minimum price, my maximum price, and then I could set up a rule that essentially reprices automatically for me. And it uses AI to be able to reprice. Now there's about five or six different settings you can choose. So whatever setting you choose is going to reprice it more aggressive or less aggressive. So say you have a minimum price at 60, like maybe you buy an item for 30 and you're like, all right, I want to sell it between 60 and 70. You put your minimum price at 60, your maximum price at 70, and then you could set how aggressive you want your AI repricer to be. And based on that setting, it's going to reprice it more or less aggressive within that parameter. So be cool is definitely a great software. I've been enjoying it. I've made a lot of videos about it. I'll definitely make another podcast episode in the future where I dive into be cool. But I would say that's, you know, something really necessary once you get to, you know, five to $10,000 a month or at least a couple hundred in inventory. And then number eight, last but not least is IP alert. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with IP Alert. Essentially what IP Alert is, is a Chrome extension that will warn you of products that you're thinking about selling or products are analyzing and you're trying to figure out, is this going to be a threat of an IP complaint, you know, an intellectual property complaint? And, uh, you know, we talked about this, I believe on the last episode where we talked about we don't have invoices. We have to be careful about getting IP complaints, counterfeit, so on and so forth. We have to make sure to avoid listing items where the brand or the, you know, the actual brand is on the listing, the storefront. So, you know, IP alerts a good tool because they have a database of brands that are known to give IP complaints. The thing is some people could be a bit malicious in makeup, you know, and say, oh, Sony or makeup Lego gave me an IP complaint. And then they, you know, maybe it somehow passes the check over at the team of IP alert and goes on and it warns you, but maybe someone was being malicious. You, you kind of get what I'm saying. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. I think IP alerts really good to have because if you're dealing with brands that you've never sold before, it's nice to have that warning prompted. But when you're looking to avoid IP complaints and you're looking to learn, is this a threat? Keep a keep a keep. I can't say it enough. Use the keep a Chrome extension because you're looking for the number of sellers in those drop offs. If you see those cliff drops, a lot of times it's because of IP complaints. It could be because of a brand gating, but uh, IP alerts nice. It's not necessary, but it's definitely something nice to have when you're doing you know ten, twenty, thirty thousand a month plus because you're doing so much volume. It's nice to have that you know second set of eyes there. So those are the eight softwares. Number one, Keepa. I would say that's necessary for all sellers. Seller Ramp same thing, or maybe rev seller. They're all pretty decent. Flipmine, hundred percent necessary. If you're doing eBay to Amazon, it's like 40 or 50 bucks a month. It's a no brainer. I mean, you could find one item and pay for that subscription and <laughs> in minutes, E2A master sheet, really good. Obviously it's my own software, but this is something I've spent, you know, over $20,000 the last year building this out. So I use this in my business every single day. If you're using a prep center, it's not really necessary, but there are some benefits there. But I would say once you start picking up two, three, four items a day, hundred percent, you're going to want to get the master sheet or else you're valuing your time at like a dollar per hour. It saves a lot of time with the various nuances. Go to lister number five. I mean, go to lister is what I use, but any listing third-party listing application is going to save you a ton of time. Don't waste your time listing on Amazon Seller Central. Number six, my replan software that will be coming soon. Seven is Be Cool, which isn't necessary until you do maybe five to 10K a month or 100 to 200 items, I would say. And then number eight is IP Alert. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. In episode number four, we're going to talk about 10 tips for sourcing more profitable deals with Flipmine. So be able to be sure to check that out uh, next week and to be able to learn all about Flipmine. But yeah, hopefully everybody is doing well. I've had a lot of fun making this podcast. If you are enjoying this podcast and you're finding value in it, please go over to Apple or your favorite podcast application and leave a, you know, an honest review. Hopefully if you like it, you leave a positive review helps to get the word out because I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible to learn how to grow and build their reselling business so they can have more freedom. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. If you have any questions for me regarding E2A, eBay to Amazon flipping, check the show notes. There's a document there. I believe it's rakeandprofit.com slash ask Steve. And I'm checking that every week and I'm going to start answering viewer questions on the podcast and any links, discount codes, it's all going to be in the show notes as well. So with that being said, appreciate you all much love. And if you want to watch the video version of this, head over to YouTube. What's up my YouTube fam. Thanks everybody. See you in the next one. Bye.